three, two, one. Welcome. Hello, Bernardo. Very nice to see you today. Hello, Marcy. How are you? Very well, very well. So for today, we have something a little bit special that we're going to be talking about. The topic of our conversation today is going to be more so related to technology and the impact of technology and AI on learning and on education and on integrity related to education. And before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit of your background, what you do? Sure. So um, I'm Bernardo. I am a senior lecturer at ANU in the School of Computing, and I've been doing this for quite some time now. So I'm an educator for over 10 years, more or less. And um, I've been working in education uh, and also research, and now I'm a sub-dean of academic integrity at ANU. So I guess... I've been involved in different sides of education, like going for uh, teaching, which is a quite big experience. Like you go to the classroom and then you experience that, uh, the interactions with students, the creation of materials, etc. When we move to online because of COVID, then it's a different experience as well. So we learned a lot from that experience, like how to move online and what... Uh, we need to do and also what are the needs from the students etc uh, as a researcher i've been doing research in computer science education and education and computer science as well like in different areas but i have this passion for computer science education and i've been put putting lots of efforts on trying to understand how students uh, can learn better or how can we as teachers can deliver the content better for these students right so reducing anxiety to also increasing their performance um as a as a student academic integrity then in these last years we have been facing a lot of challenges um, because like moving online had been well created all the opportunities for cheating and uh, in this role i've been trying to create or uh, uh, a culture of integrity um, um, in, in the university and promote today's right and also creating um, new resources and also do some research to understand why people choose this path and how can we combat this or how can we help them um, not cheat, not cheat right like look for other ways <laughs> essentially <to learn>. sure <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And but how do you, yeah, in your that's, own that's words, define integrity? What does that mean to you? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Well, like um, if if we are putting this in terms of uh, academic uh, performance, uh, well, actually, if I put this in, in academia, right? Basically, um, when you cheat, you are not cheating only against the university; you are cheating to yourself. Um, so the main idea here is, is to understand the importance of learning to then uh, um, go for the mark. So many, many people, so when you say like, what, what is integrity? Integrity is basically doing what you have to do without consulting other sources and uh, uh, not, not that are not allowed, right? Like uh, to 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 pretend you perform better than you would by yourself. So the main idea here is we, we have to show students that knowing where they are, where they stand in terms of learning, will help them also to look for the right sources to improve and then achieve what they want to achieve. So when they cheat, they are cheating themselves. And this has an impact to the university uh, of course, that's why we are very concerned about this and we try to create this uh, culture of integrity. But it is, in my opinion, it's more about um, you and yourself understanding that our resources and that we can help you to strive to do better in your career. 
And I want to come back with that to what you were talking about before that with moving online with COVID, of course, facilitating that. How would you say that technology and perhaps AI, maybe more specifically in the, the more recent times, has impacted learning and, and education integrity in general? Yes. Um, so I, I, I think like COVID uh, helped um, in a lot of ways. Right, it was positive in many ways, including like um, facilitating learning. Right, so online. Right, so you you we had like many people before that they were afraid of experimenting this this method. Right, this mode of delivery. And uh, it, it was only like a personal perspective. They never actually tried that. And then they would say, like, this doesn't work. So because of COVID, then people had to do it. It was like, now it's mandatory. Uh, you have to do it. It's the only way. And then many of these people uh, started enjoying it, so finding, like, different things that would be, like, good, right? So, like, well, it's really good that I can just teach everywhere, anytime. Of course, there are some problems there. It's not so easy. Um, but... Um, we see now lots of benefits, but as a tool, like, and as we know, it's not like there is one tool that fits all, right? So it's like a one size fits all thing. So I think like now we know, uh, we know more about this mode and we can explore better. So the fact that we moved along that our line then facilitated, uh, cheating in some ways, right? So in terms of research, right, there are some reasons why this facilitated uh, uh, cheating. And basically, it's because, like, people think that they will not be caught, right? It's just like, oh, nobody know me. I'm here. I'm at my own uh, house room. Nobody will see me doing it. Then we, uh, they do it. So the, the, the feeling that the, they will not be caught makes them believe that, well, they can do it and then have some advantage right um, there are many tools that we use uh to to try to identify this cheating plagiarism and other uh contract cheating plagiarism and etc cetera, etc cetera. um but well this definitely facilitated in some ways in this belief right like they believe that they will um not be caught but on the other hand um, on the other hand, it's also related to how we design assignments, right? So, so the, if if I I keep doing what I was doing before, of course, you know there will be some <laughs> breaches, right? That they can explore, and students will explore. They will try to find a way to do better, and sometimes they don't actually realize they are cheating, right? It's just because they want to perform better and do better, and which is good. So there are, the other way there is that we, um, as uh, educators, we have to understand like the exam design is very important and we'll contribute to that if we don't do uh, in the right way and not because they are actively or intentionally cheating, but it's because, well, the platform that we are, we will allow them to look for other resources, you know, to try to find the, the, the answers in different ways. That maybe if you are in person within a classroom, kind of isolated, uh, you don't have access to these things. Right? So anyway, it depends on what you are trying to measure, depends on what you're trying to achieve with that exam, et cetera. But yeah, so I think um, in COVID facilitated uh, in this way, that's because like people started thinking that maybe, uh, you know, I nobody knows me, I... I am here, nobody will see, etc. Uh, on the other hand, like also it can be used for us as a reflection that the types of assignments that we have been doing, it doesn't work for this uh, online uh, mode. How have you been changing your assignments? Have they been more now focused on their personal opinions or their personal creations? Or how do you tech proof, let's say, or AI proof your assignments? Yeah, there are there are many ways, right? We we 
I, I did create a different assignment that uh, it is a video platform. It's like a YouTube-like platform where students have to create their own videos and uh, they have to choose any topic in my course and they will develop further, right? And the main idea is that they give the, the their own perspective on that topic. So it is basically open, right? They can just choose whatever. Um, but the point is, it's, it's harder to, to cheat, right? Because it's very personal and no motivation, right? So just like, hey, you need to be creative. You need to uh, choose something. You need to write a script and then record the video. And I, I've seen like really great work, right? So, um, so this is one possibility. Uh, one that's very common and I also used... Um, but um, for for some of the assignments, we have like multiple versions of the questions, right? So when it's it's more difficult for collusion, for example, right? Like so, if if they are trying to to you know create a group where each of them can do one question and exchange, uh, that would be more difficult because we actually have like multiple versions of the questions. It does give us a little bit more work because, well, you have to create multiple versions for the questions and you have to ensure that they have the same level, et cetera, et cetera. But it's still, um, it is a possibility as well. But in, in some ways, um, the main idea is to bring their experience into the assignments, right? Like their own perspective. This cannot be changed. Everyone will have their own perspective. And if if you if you always... If you are always looking for something mechanical, then um, yes, uh, it'll be easier to to cheat, right? If even if they are not online. And do you think that there is a way that technology and AI can promote integrity, that it can create integrity, as opposed to being the the negative catalyst? Exactly. Yes. Um, yes. Um, so, so we are talking now about ChatGPT. So this is actually very interesting, right? Because um, a few years ago, we were like in this online mode and then people were like, we need to go back because we need to have uh, in-person uh, exams again, like invigilated in exams. Uh, this uh, will end with the, the cheating that, you know, COVID facilitated, right, say. So um, we now we got like chat GPT, right? So right like after this, we got chat GPT. So it does just shows that doesn't really matter, right? Like if it's online or not, there will be always a way to do it. So what we need to do again is to change the way we do our assignments, the change what we want from students and this requires lots of thinking this requires lots of preparation so um, there are two ways to see problems with like how to deal with integrity you can deal before the exam in the sense that you prepare you spend lots of time preparing a really good exam or afterwards where you deal with the cases because your exam design was not really uh suitable let's say in some ways that made you have like um, a few cases of uh, academic dishonesty and then you have to deal with this afterwards so like the time is basically the same you just choose where you want to allocate this time right i would say the best is like to use these tools to help you in the design of the the assignments for example um, I just had one exam that I created the question and then we asked ChatGPT, right, to generate the answer to see and the answer was wrong or it was not exactly what we would expect uh, from, yeah. from, you know, yeah. Okay, and then this little reverse engineering. Yeah, so so nice. what we asked was like we instead of giving the answer, we asked the we we gave the answer we we the question that we gave to ChatGPT and the answer that ChatGPT gave to us and gave to the student and say, like, what do you think about it? How would you uh, improve this um, 
answer, right? And then explain to us how would you do that, right? So in this way, it's kind of very difficult for other tools to to answer that question in the way that we want them to answer, right? Again, putting this personal perspective, right? I want the personal view of the student. So in some ways, I guess these tools are positive. Um, I think they will contribute uh, a lot to everyone like and um it will make us more efficient as well if we know how to use these tools so instead of banning them i would basically incorporate them and teach them how to use and explore these tools in a way that make us more efficient but knowing that we need to know uh what we need to do and how to use the tool to use these responsibly ethically and uh for our own good which is a wonderful point. And I, that reminds me of a, a post on LinkedIn that I saw recently that instead of trying to, like you said, ban and, you know, prevent people from using AI and chat GPT and, and other tools, it's actually been very positive because it creates that need for active thinking and very good question writing skills as opposed to hey do that for me and then you get a completely wrong answer and okay you need to really analyze what you actually want to know which is great because then instead of memorizing tables for your exams you actually have to think now which seems to be a positive change yes yes exactly i have one phd student who was working with um, search engines and how these search engines can be used for learning right so search as learning is the topic and it's interesting because this student was um trying to understand how people search right like the behavior and exploring like the the results the sources and see like how this contribute to to the learning process right so the searching process how the searching process um help you learn and what we see in many cases is that people don't know how to formulate the search right and this is a couple of keywords a couple of search terms and then because they start with a term then they see the, the the results and it's like oh i understand maybe i should go to this resource here because this is related to what i'm looking for so they find the right term and then they do a new search so we are talking about a couple of words when we go to chat spt we are actually formulating a question right and it's even more difficult if you don't know the topic you don't know how to ask for anything to create like to have a good question you need to know how to answer that right of course there are strategies so i think like my student my phd student uh is like um working on how to interact with these tools so that it promotes learning as well and one thing is like sometimes it's like ask for questions right like like what would be the right questions for this topic right so so it's actually very interesting that um some of the some of the the, the it's not actually about you creating a question but it's about like you asking to test bt to generate a question for you and then you assess again you are part of the process you are not just getting this information from them. It is it is uh, something that I believe that ChatGPT can kind of um, make us a little bit blind is because they give you one answer, right? So before, uh, when you before like when you Google something, you have like uh, some diversity in the results when you ask something uh, to ChatGPT or in these AI tools, they tend to give you one single answer. So that can put you in a bubble, right? Like, and then and don't see like all the perspectives, all the possibilities from there. So, so I guess uh, these tools can be really good, like to, you know, promote learning in some ways, but can also be not so good like not beneficial uh, if you rely on these tools only right you need i guess to also know how to ask questions to get like multiple 
perspectives and also explore other resources, right? Don't just use it and believe that's true because this will be, I mean, it, that, the, the, the way they were built is, is very interesting and will and do perform well in many tasks, but um, it is always limited. Um, so you need to always try to diversify um, the sources you, you, you use for learning. And speaking of diversifying the tools used for learning, I'm, I suppose that uh, to you listening, I guess what you have in your background, those flying colors and <laughs> and everything going on in the background. Can you tell us a little bit more about your escape room? What's that all about? Yeah, so so this is like a escape room. So we created for so before, after COVID, we realized that people they were lacking some social skills, right? They got isolated for uh, a couple of years, um, and especially in some countries. And uh, when they came back. Uh, we were thinking, like, how can we promote, like, how can we develop these skills again? And, uh, like, communication skills, teamwork skills, um, problem solving, and et cetera, et cetera. But, like, we were trying to to find uh, um, uh, uh, an activity that could help them that and also explore the topics that we have that we teach uh, in our course. So... I came up with this idea of like having an escape room. Um, then we built it and it was very successful. We ran last week or so for around 300 students. They, they, the feedback is quite positive. And um, it is a different, fun way, uh, you know, playful to learn and uh, also develop some other soft skills that are more and more uh, necessary, right? So you see, like we are talking about ChatGPT, and then ChatGPT can basically um, replace some of the hard skills that we have, right? So make us more efficient, but replacing it in some ways. So, it, but it cannot replace our soft skills, right? Our the way we interact with people, and this is actually the most important part. Right, like we know that most of the problems we have is between people, not between machines. So, so basically, I would say like this is an uh, initiative that I had here to um, try to uh, show the importance of the soft skills, and also, of course, like the puzzles that we have will be related to the topics that we address in the course, and therefore they will also be practicing the hard skills. Can you show us around a little bit what you were showing me before all these, uh, yeah, these different course. sites? Yeah. So this, this is, <laughs> we, we built a software um, and that's here behind. I don't think we can actually see well, but um, we have uh, a few puzzles. So that red thing inside that is a puzzle there. Uh, here it's um, the painting is like a, you use the UV light to, you mm -hmm. know, find what you have to find there. Then you have like some, so the decoration, most of the decoration we use like e-waste, right, to do this. And then so just like old uh, parts of computers. Uh, so there is, a, there is a small thing inside this computer here. So mm -hmm. you have to find it and then to solve another riddle. So this, uh, this here is one riddle and this star is another riddle as well. And yeah, so that's basically uh, the escape room. We have uh, run this for the university and also some some schools here in Australia. Uh, we are also promoting the use of the escape room in industry to develop these um, soft skills, right? We can prepare the riddles and puzzles in such a way that it promotes like communication or uh, leadership or... Uh, collaboration, etc. So um, we we have been uh, working a lot with the escape room, but also there are some good rewards. Like people really enjoy it, and they see um, how it can be used for you know learning. So it has been really good. 
I like how you mentioned that it's a combination of both the soft skills and the hard skills, because on the one hand, you do need to know a little bit about what you mentioned, your coursework, the content itself, but also communication, talking to other people. And I would really love to spin that in, in the direction of what we were talking about last time with having a lot of international students at your university and English potentially not being their first language and them having to communicate together and work as a team to solve all these riddles that you were just showing us. So how do you think that has impacted their learning, not just of the course content, but like you said, communication, potentially the language that they use, the way that they structure their questions, their responses, what would you say has been the effect on language learning for them? Yes, um, that's a really good question. Uh, I think the, the the escape room can help them to lose this fear, of, mm. or, or at least if they, they if they have some uh, lack of, say, they lack confidence. Um, this can show them that they have to communicate, and they have, and and they can even if they struggle because they don't master the language yet. Uh, they will see that wow, I can communicate, I can do it, and get and build more, you know, this confidence in such a way that uh, they 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 will be motivated to learn more, to develop more the the language skill. So um, I guess everyone who comes to a new country and have to learn the the language uh, they struggle in many ways so it, it was not different for me i guess um when i came here i had a certain level of english but you come here and then you see that the native english speakers is speak sometimes different from you know like what you read in the books so i think it's really important to practice that as much as you can you know so have like a, a a teacher like you like you know someone that can coach you on the way uh you know to to you know this move uh, for for example will help a lot uh but also like yeah having this kind of activities will help them to speak more because they have to you know like you cannot escape this room without <laughs> saying a word right so you need to talk to your colleague and your colleague needs to understand what you're talking so you're gonna find different ways to explain and this time pressure that you have here will be like oh my god doesn't matter if i say <laughs> correct or wrong i need yeah. to say something right so so and then you actually so you, you are not focusing or you are not thinking about the language Right, you are thinking that I have to communicate, no matter what. It's a it's a matter of like escaping this room or not. I need to do it. So, for for this period, you actually forget about the problems that you have with your language. Right, you just feel like no, 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 this is wrong, this is that. But you communicate, and this is the most important thing, right? So, uh, English is not my first language, uh, but I can communicate. I can let really? other people know what i'm thinking <laughs> no but yeah but I, you you can right so so it's it doesn't need to be your uh first language to actually um you'll be able to communicate well so so i guess this is an opportunity for them to to practice and also to note that they they can communicate like effectively so it, it, it is a, another way uh but uh, i think we talked about this before but i think like this kind of activities and others you need to find other activities uh to put yourself uh, in a context that you're not used and then you you will learn a new vocabulary right when you come here and then you see like oh there is some uh webs on the wall right and these webs will contribute to one of the riddles then he's like what is the name of the thing this 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 someone will tell you right it's so like yeah the web well the web is used for that right so so all these things will contribute um for um your learning your language learning right just yeah i think the, the escape room will help um the students to understand that they can communicate and also help them to develop like these communication skills, like the, the, the language, right? Because they will see new 
things that they haven't, and then they will learn during this experience. Which is a perfect case study for the importance of actually being in an environment where you are forced to speak, because on the one hand, what we were talking about before, right, you preparing for your exam, preparing to move to Australia, then we were talking, right, and you were reading and watching things, which is a wonderful start. But then when you're actually there and you have no other options and you have to talk to people, I feel like that's the greatest motivator. And on the one hand, the scariest one you can possibly experience. But the quickest way to, like you said, gaining that confidence, even though I'm not perfect, even though I maybe don't know everything, but I can talk, I can communicate, I can express myself. Yes, yes, you 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 become active, right, in your learning process. So I think like watching movies, uh, reading, they are really important, but they are passive ways to learn the language, right? So when you come here and someone ask you a question and you have to actually answer this question first you need to understand the question right yes, that's Second, the first you, need to, <laughs> you need to then answer this question so this is really really hard right like it's really difficult if you just arrived here so that's why i think like talking right like have someone to talk uh with about different topics uh, it's really important. And yes, like having the pressure, um, it is like in a, in certain ways, right? And for a limited time, it is good <laughs> as well, right? Yeah, because you cannot have escape room like for 24 hours. But uh, but if you have like here one hour uh, inside this escape room, uh, you will see that you actually can do a lot with the language that you have. Um, but maybe if you are outside of the escape room and then you go to the supermarket, you are so afraid of like, you know, talking that you will, you will never practice and you never gain this confidence, right? That you could gain here, just like, okay, I have to communicate people. And then you, you leave the escape room with this feeling that's like, wow, I, I, I said, I could say, you know, people understood me. So I think it's really, really, um, a good possibility use the escape room to um uh, you know uh, develop uh language learning did you at the very beginning when you just uh, came to australia when you just started working at the university were there any some sort of let's say support programs that okay maybe people spoke to you slower or something like that or was it full on okay nobody cares <laughs> You have to well, deal with guess, that yourself. I guess, <laughs> no, I guess, I guess. Um, so the Australian government gives you some support. I didn't use it, but I know that they have some uh, free English courses for people who are permanent residents or something like that. So I know that there are that you know there are many different uh, supports. Uh, the university has as well. So there is a um, here. Um, the academic skills departments that they help like students who will be struggling in writing or speaking, et cetera. So they can also provide uh, them with resources and help. But I would say like the best thing people do is not to actually so talk to uh, is lower. I think mm. like they, the fact that they just talk um, to you as they were talking to uh, someone that is a native English speaker uh, it's actually uh, very good because you you kind of get you know you 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 get used to to the accent to the way they speak and etc and that speed up the process. I think if people talks to you like in a very slow way, then basically one the communication doesn't flow well, and uh, it's maybe it's tiring sometimes. Um, so yeah, I guess like sometimes I struggled. I struggled as everyone. I I, I can say like uh, some expressions that you you don't know, or the accent sometimes a bit um, complicated for me. Right, it's my my uh, problem. Right, like to understand that. But after a, a couple of times, a couple of interactions, then you start like getting. Oh, that's how they say this thing. That's how um uh this expression uh fits in this context etc so i guess um there were support 
but also I guess um, when people talk to you as they talk normally, I think it's much better actually when they, because sometimes they also some people I would say would would just stop and say like, "Hello, how are you?" So it looks like you are stupid. It's just like not my first language. <laughs> but I understand you, you know. I probably cannot speak as fast as you can, right? <laughs> but but like uh I can still process the information, right? <laughs> so it's okay. Uh but I wouldn't be afraid to say, could you repeat please? Um sorry, I didn't understand you. I think these are things that you should feel comfortable saying, uh, and understand that people will understand. Some people speak multiple languages as well. They they will know how much you struggle with that. So with with the with English, if this is the case, so I think there is no problem. Um, people usually are very supportive. Uh, my experience was very positive as well. I have a colleague that would repeat whatever I said wrongly to you know help me. Um, understand how to say that thing correctly so sometimes i would my pronunciation was not really good well still needed to improve but <laughs> but my my pronunciation of some words were like very very different of what it should be and then this colleague of mine would in some way find a way to repeat that word so that i would listen uh but he would never actually tell me it was wrong. So I think it was very nice of uh, this colleague of mine. And I learned lots from that as well. So I could just pay attention, like observe. And it's like, ah, okay. <laughs> actually, it's not this. It's like that. Ah, cool. Yeah. So I guess I guess there are there, there are lots of support. Uh, if, you, if you look for that, you're going to find. And also people... You know, lots of nice people that will be there to help you and um yeah you can just speak speak and you're gonna find the right way to say it or someone will help you to say like oh there is a better expression or there is a better way to say that wonderful so it sounds like you've had a relatively positive experience in australia the university with everything happening Yes, I think like people in general here, um, they are very supportive. Uh, in the university, I think people uh, have just been very, very nice all the time, very friendly as well. Um, so it might be my good experience, right? I might <laughs> There might be some people with like different experiences, but I can say that my experience has been uh, really, really positive. But I remember like the first time I went to the supermarket here, I was browsing, right? To like, oh, what is this? What is this tomato yeah. sauce, right? What is this yeah. rice? <laughs> and then someone just walked past me and then said something that I, 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 it took me like a couple of, let's say at the time felt like five minutes, right? To process the thing. But he was just saying like, um, what he was saying, uh, he said something like, it's my, <laughs> I was like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? And then it was basically like, excuse me, mate. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, okay, that's what. So that was like interesting because you are not expecting um, someone talking, depending on where you come from, right? You don't expect like mate for example so <laughs> so i would just expect like excuse me or something like that but anyway um it was really like uh what does it mean um okay but then you get used to that and the way people say like how are you you know like or, or no worries for everything as well <laughs> even if it doesn't make sense it's like no worries so <laughs> so, so, so yeah anyway it's True. um <laughs> It has been a, a very good experience, but yeah, you learn lots, right? Like with the local expressions and yeah, how people say things. It's different from the books, different from the movies, um, but it's a really, it's really nice to to learn every day a new word or a new expression. I have one more question. If we circle back a little bit to what we were talking about before with technology and integrity. What do you see personally from your perspective, having worked with 
hundreds of students and the escape room initiative and i'm sure you have some tricks up your sleeves still what do you see being the future of tech of ai being used again specifically in education in learning i mean of course it's happening all so fast and so quickly that it's sometimes difficult to you know even catch up with everything that's going on but how do you see that developing as a hopefully positive tool but maybe otherwise in the future well i guess it is difficult to say like how mm. it will be the future right and i i i watched a, a presentation the other day from one guy who got the nobel prize in economics and he at knew and then the only thing he said is like i will not answer questions about the future I know the past, but I don't know the future. Yeah. Something like that in his life. And I think it was <laughs> kind of wise. Yeah, I think that's quite kind of wise, especially for someone who got the Nobel Prize, you know, like because if they do a bad prediction, right. you know, it's yeah. like, oh my God. Oh, <laughs> but, look at but, him. Uh, but I say, <laughs> yes, like I, I can say I can say that well, um, if we look at the past and then we think about calculators, how calculators change. At, at that time right so someone probably worked in a grocery and then had a math skill and then came up like calculators and so like oh my god i will lose my job right because now i have calculators it's like no actually it was um repurposed right like we repurpose things and then create new possibilities so so then we um more recently we had wikipedia right and it's like oh my god what happened you know like before we had encyclopedias the, the britannica encyclopedia and that, that was like the, the 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 information was very accurate or something like that there are studies that shows that there are some also some mistakes there but anyway skipping that it's like well again it it maybe uh helps democratize learning right or the knowledge so it helps a lot as well google helped a lot chat gpt will help a lot as well of course it can bring other you know difficulties or other problems there that we have to face and 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 work on that to improve but but it's still so what i think is like um many people are always afraid with the changes and i think like the changes are always good um because it will help us to do things that uh, will help us to advance better right so basically um if we create a new technology today that will help people to learn better understand things better have more access to information this can only be seen as a good thing if this will change the way i work then i need to learn and i need to test new possibilities to um do what i was doing before in a better way so the future for me is uh, many more tools will come to help um, people learn uh, in different ways. And then we have to also work on understanding these tools and how these tools can actually um, make us learn more efficiently, efficiently and how can we use these to um, our own benefit in the end. In the end of this, at the end of this, the the what we are doing is like trying to create tools that will help us uh with something right like be in our personal lives to have a better work-life balance or whatever so how can we uh say that this is not positive well if not positive we use this in a way that uh um, harm the society so i guess there are lots of positives there as long as we uh, have always in mind that we have to work with these things responsibly, ethically, uh, and and know uh, like how to explore the benefits and also how to work um, when we find something that can be harmful to us. Right? So the future, I think, is bright. Uh, it is just another tool that will help you uh, help us uh build better things more efficiently i hope so <laughs> tell me is I there anything I, that it, i should have asked you but i didn't anything else that you would like to 
tell us a little bit more about? Um, so I guess, um, yes, I, 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 I think that um, never stop learning, right? Like if we are talking about education here and language learning and learning in general, I think that um, we should always put ourselves in the uncomfortable zone so that we learn from that. If you are in your comfortable zone on the time, it means that you are not actually uh, challenging yourself or learning things. So move a little bit. You don't need to go to the opposite side, like, well, you are completely uncomfortable, but put yourself in a situation that you um, will develop some of these skills. You you will do something that you uh, don't know, but you want to know, and you're going to learn and you'll do better. And use the tools. If there is a tool, use the tools to make it um, more efficiently. I think this is uh, what I would say in the end. is like use whatever you have responsibly, uh, to achieve your goals, your learning goals. Certainly. And I, I heard a wonderful quote once. It was that if you're not embarrassed by who you were a year ago, you haven't grown enough, which summarizes very well what you've just said, that if you're not putting yourself outside of your comfort zone, if you're just still there one, two, three, five, ten years, then maybe you're not growing as you should be. Yes. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Then. Then we have to work in some other things, right? Understand why you are not moving. What makes you to be, you know, in the same position and um, yeah, in that place. So yeah, I think it's uh, use the tools, talk to people. People are always there to help. That is, uh, I think, like I, I, I think I have like a really good collaborators and uh i always learn from them i only i always learn from my students as well i don't think there is a only one way i'm always learning from them they always bring like new tools and even when they ask questions sometimes it's like oh this is a really good question we have to think about how to do this or how to model this problem anyway so i think you can learn from every situation and even if your language skills are not as good as you would like it to be, um, when you are talking to someone who has a better skill, language skills, or, or is a native English speaker, they will be learning from you as well because you will say an expression that is in your own language and they'll be like, oh, this is <laughs> like interesting, right? Like the way, so we always have something to give and to receive. So explore, communicate. If, if you are you know, if you hide yourself, then nobody can find you. You cannot show what you have. So put yourself in a situation that you can share things, that can talk to others. Even if it's not comfortable in the beginning, it will be one day. Believe me, it will be one day. I was not comfortable <laughs> at some point. I still, like, there are situations that I still, like, you know, I listen more than I talk because, you know, I want to see what's going on. Uh, but then um after you just get comfortable and like increase your gain some confidence to 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 talk and and give your opinion and speaking of making yourself known finding people to anybody listening where can people find you find your work maybe get in touch with you potentially Yes. Um, yeah. If you're interested in education, computer science, um, uh, in academic integrity, well, I am. Um, you can easily find me uh, on Google. <laughs> so just put my name there, Bernardo Pereira Nunes, or LinkedIn, and then we can connect. And well, happy to discuss any of the topics. Beautiful. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Bernardo. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you today. And I hope that we can get in touch sometime soon later on. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Marty. Always good to talk to you. Hey, I'm glad to see you here. Let me know what you most enjoyed about this conversation. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Do zobaczenia.